ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech the best of words is the speech and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance we have of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد يقول الشيخ الإسلام من الشيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله أسأل الله الكريم رب العرش العظيم أن يتولاك في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يجعلك مباركا أينما كنت وأن يجعلك ممن إذا أعطي شكر وإذا ابتلي صبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء الثلاث عنوان السعادة In the beginning of the book Al-Qawaid Al-Arba The four rules or fundamentals regarding shirk by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab رحمه الله that we're reviewing every Sunday in our weekly halaqa, he began his treatise with these words, saying, I ask Allah, the most merciful Lord of the great throne, to take care of and protect you in this world and the hereafter. And this was for all of those seeking knowledge and to make you blessed wherever you may be and that you may be of those who are grateful when you're provided for, those who are patient when you're tested, those who seek forgiveness when they sin, for these are the three signs of happiness. So he highlighted these three signs. In a world, in a time where we're seeking happiness from every other way other than the way of Allah, let us review and reflect upon these three points and why these three, if they are present in the mind, the heart, the body, the soul of the person, will they really taste happiness? He said, إِذَا أُعْدِيَ shakar." So he made supplication, he made a dua for his students and anyone seeking knowledge that they be of those who when they're given by Allah and granted by Allah, that they are grateful. As opposed to the one who when they're given, it's never enough. When they're given, they're always looking for something to complain about. They commit kufr, the kufr of ungratefulness. They deny the bounties of Allah. And they use those blessings, those bounties, they squander them instead of doing good with them. They use them to do haram and fulfill their desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَغْلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah says what means, and He gave you all that you asked for. Allah has given you what you've asked for, and if you think He hasn't, then you're the one who's deceiving your own self. And if you were to count the blessings of Allah, to enumerate them, to list them all down, you would never be able to enumerate them. You'd never be able to count them all. You would be missing billions. Verily, man is indeed an extreme wrongdoer. 
a disbeliever, an ingrate. He denies Allah's blessings by disbelief. He denies Allah's blessings by worshipping other than Allah. He denies Allah's blessings by, disobe- by disobeying Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But for the one who is grateful, the one who is thankful to Allah, not needing anything in return, she shouldn't need or deserve anything in return. Allah will increase him. Allah says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ And remember, when your Lord proclaimed, and if you, gave, if you give thanks by accepting tawheed, by accepting faith, by worshipping none other than Allah, then I will give you more of my blessings. لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you were to thank me and to praise me, Allah is saying, and to glorify me and extol me and worship none other but me, alone in truth, then I will give you more of my blessings. But if you are ungrateful and thankless, verily my punishment is indeed severe. So Allah, He increases the bounties and the favors of those who are grateful. So if you're looking for more, then you thank Allah more, you praise Allah more, you show more gratitude to Allah, and you do not ignore the bounties and the favors that He has given you. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ أَنْ أَشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرْ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah says, وَمِيدًا إِنْدِيرٌ بِالسُّورًا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We gave Luqman wisdom, a religious understanding. He commanded him to say, to be of those who give thanks to Allah. Saying to him, give thanks to Allah, give thanks to your Lord. Whoever gives thanks to Allah and counts the blessings of Allah and appreciates what Allah has blessed him with and doesn't look at them as being short in any way, then this benefits himself. As Allah said, and whoever gives thanks to Allah, he gives thanks for the good of his own self. You're only benefiting yourself by praising Allah and thanking Allah, showing gratitude to Allah. And whoever is unthankful, then verily Allah is all rich, free of all wants, worthy of all praise. This is a Lord that does not need us. His mulk, His kingdom, His lordship, none of it is diminished whether we worship Him or we don't. This only benefits our own selves. This only benefits us when we thank Allah and we praise Allah and we glorify Him. ثم قال الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن فمن الله ثم إذا مسكم الضر فإليه تجأرون. Allah says what means and whatever of the blessings and goods you have, it is from Allah. Then when harm touches you, unto Him you cry aloud for help. And this is the way of Bani Adam. That when he's doing good, he forgets that it's from Allah. He ascribes it to himself. He looks at his hard work, his toil, his sweat, his struggle as the reason for why he has. And then he ignores his Lord. He ignores thanking him and praising him. He honors himself. He makes himself big and puffed up, proud and arrogant, looking at himself in the mirror at what he's amassed and accomplished in this life. When it's all from Allah. And it's all given to you by Allah. Every bounty, every ni'mah, every favor, every blessing is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when harm touches the people, they want to run back to their Lord. They forget Allah in good times and they want to only remember them. Remember them. Remember Allah when they're in a state of struggle. Do not fall into that trap. Allah said, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا Allah says, what means, why should Allah punish you if you thanked Him and have believed in Him? If you believe in Allah and you worship none but Him and you thank Him and you give Him praise and you appreciate Him and give Him gratitude, then Allah says, why should Allah punish you? And Allah is ever all appreciative of good, all knowing. We benefit ourselves when we do good. So when Allah gives, then be thankful you will taste real happiness. Whether it's small or big, a minor amount in your eyes or large, thank Allah and praise Allah and know that you did not get it except by Allah's decree. وَإِذَ ابْتُلِيَ صَبَرٌ 
So the Shaykh at this reading, he's making dua for his students, for the people of knowledge, the people searching, searching for knowledge. Saying, I ask you, Allah to make you amongst those who are patient when they're tested. Because we have this beautiful thing in Islam that when Allah loves a person, He tests them. That when you have hardships and calamities from enemies, from, the, from disbelievers, from the hypocrites, when you're enduring hardship and struggle, then you need patience, you need optimism, because you have Allah on your side. And you should never doubt that. You should not despair for the mercy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Contrary to the opposite, who when they're tested, they become angry, they become sad, they become depressed, they become anxious, despairing for Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was narrated from him and related, narrated to us from Anas ibn Malik that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, عِذْمُ الْجَزَاءِ مَعَ إِذْمُ الْبَلَاءِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهَ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّدَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السُّخْطِ رَوْهُ إِبْنِ مَاجَ وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ حَسَنٌ The Prophet ﷺ he said in the authentic hadith, the greatest reward comes with the greatest trial. If you're being tested harder than anyone else, know that you got a greater reward coming for you. Only the believer can put himself in this state. Because the disbelievers, they think the opposite, that if I'm doing good, I should be given good here. Because they don't know the extent of the jannah that awaits. فِيهَا مَا لَا عِينٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذِنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ أَوْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ إِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَا هَذَا لَا يُبْنِ يُوَسِّيَ وَلَا هَذَا لَا يُبْنِ بِنْسِيَ يُوَهِيَ وَلَا هَذَا لَا يُبْنِ هَرْدَ يُوَسِّيَ 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 و when Allah loves the people, He gives them some difficulty to keep them close and attached. Whoever accepts Allah's qadr, they win Allah's pleasure. And whoever is discontent with what Allah has decreed for him, then he earns Allah's displeasure or Allah's wrath. Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad, he heard from his father, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, anhu, that he said, I said to the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, which people are the most severely tested? فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الأنبياء ثم الأمثل فالأمثل يبتل العبد على حسب دينه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he responded the prophets then the next best then the next best. He said a person is tested according to his religious commitment. So if a person is steadfast in his deen, then he will be tested more severely. And if he's frail in his deen, in his religious commitment, then his tests will be according to his commitment. فَمَا يَبْرَحُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَتْرُخُهُ بِيَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَطِيئَةِ The hadith concludes, and this hadith is Hassan in the Sunan of Ibn Majah. The Prophet ﷺ said, the trials will continue to afflict the person. Hardship will continue to come your way until you will be left walking on the earth as if you have no sin, as if you have not sinned. This is a rahmah, this is a gift. This is a mercy from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. The us who He created and gave us all these favors and bounties. And we sin and we're so short in thanking Him and praising Him and extolling Him and His greatness. That He would punish us while we're still on this earth and still admit us into Jannah. That you could get to the point in your suffering, in your struggling in the calamities and hardships you're facing, that you would walk on this earth as if that lifetime of sins you didn't do. And we can only praise Allah for that. The messages, messengers were tested. The sahaba were tested. The tabi'een and the tabi'een were tested. The martyrs were tested. The righteous slaves, they were tested. But they were patient in those tests. Accepting Allah's qadr. Allah though, He said about the hypocrites, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ 
أطمأن به وإن أصابته فتنة أنقلب على وجهه خسر الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو الخسران المبين Allah says what means that amongst mankind is he who worships Allah as if it were, as it were upon the very edge. Yani in doubt, if good befalls him, he is content, he goes with it. But when trial befalls him, he turns back on his face. He reverts back on his deen. He abandons his deen and starts chasing his desires. He loses both this world and the hereafter. This is the evident loss. This is the true loss. Al-Khusran al-Mubeen. To revert away from Allah. To revert away from the sunnah of His Messenger wasallam. So the world is not always about comfort, my brothers and sisters in Islam. It's not always about luxury. It's not always about entertainment. It's not always about enjoyment. It's not always about pleasure. It's not always about success. It's not always about money. It's not always about these things. Allah, He'll alternate these things between the slaves. The Sahaba were the best of the Ummah. خَيْرُ nas قَرْنِ كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى The Prophet said, The best of mankind is my generation. They were believing in the Prophet even they knew, they knew that put a, 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 a target on their head by the disbelievers, by the mushrikeen. But they still believed and they supported him and aided him. And they loved Allah and His Messenger more than anyone and anything else. Yet Allah still gave them trials. Allah says, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمُ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ وَتِلْكَ الْآيَامُ وتلك الآي... نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْهُمْ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says in Surah Al-Imran what means, and if a wound or a killing has touched you, be assured that a wound or a killing has touched others as well. And so are the days, good and not so good. This is how life is. It's not just all one joy ride. We give to men by turns that Allah may test those. Allah may test those who believe, and that He may take martyrs from amongst you. And Allah likes not the walimun, those who are the wrongdoers, the polytheists, and the mushrikeen. So the slaves should know that trials don't only afflict you. This dunya only about. Punishing Muhammad or Ahmad or whoever it may be. That everyone has their share. There's days of goodness and there's days of, hard, uh, of, of hardness. There's days of ease and there's days of hardship. So don't focus it like it's just for you. Even the awliya, the best, the righteous slaves, Allah afflicted. But this was a sign of His love. If Allah loves the people, He tests them and He tries them. So Hayb, He narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءٍ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءٍ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith and yes you said it before and yes you heard but when you actualize it you'll live your life with a lot more ease because anything that comes your way you will brush off much more easier he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amazing is the affair, strange is the affair or the ways of a believer. For there is good in every affair. And this isn't the case except for a real mu'min, except for a real mu'min, except for a real believer, male or female. In the case of good, when delight comes to them, or some goodness comes to them, shakra, bakana khayr he thanks Allah. He praises Allah. He knows that that only came by Allah. He knows Allah can take it away in a heartbeat. He knows that no matter what he did, how hard he struggled, how hard he worked, how best he planned, it only happened by Allah's, by Allah's qadr. So he thanks Allah for it. And this is best for him. Rather than getting arrogant and proud and thinking he was the source of that success or that delight. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ But when hardship comes his way, calamities, afflictions, tests, trials, death, loss of wealth, loss of lives, loss of loved ones, whatever it may be, sabara, he's patient, content with what Allah has given him, knowing this came from خَيْرُ makirin, the best of the planners. Knowing this came and was written for him 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Because Allah, He created that pen. The first of the things He created, the pen. فَقَالَ لَهُ أَكْتُبْ He told the pen, right. 
قال يا ربي وماذا أكتب The pen said to Allah Oh my Lord what shall I write قال أكتب مقادير كل شيء حتى تقوم الساعة He said write down everything that's going to happen to the end of time Everything was written 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth That we see And that we stand on And what is unseen to us So if he has hardship صبر, He endures it patiently And this is better for him Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin and Allah he loves the patient ones. He says in the Quran many times, Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who are patient. Was sabr and the sabma fil ula as the Prophet sallallahu said in the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, but patience is at the first stroke of calamity. When you get that hardship right then, you remember Allah. You remember Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. You remember Allah. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. You're praising Allah at that first stroke of calamity. Not after an hour. Not after two days. Not after one week of cussing and beating and panting and, and, and acting like in such a cata- catastrophic way like you've lost everything when you haven't lost much when you compare it to the rest of the world. Remember this, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. From the signs of happiness is that when somebody is tested, they are patient. May Allah make us from them who are patient. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد From the three signs of happiness of Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab رحمه الله mentioned He said that if you are given you're grateful you're grateful to Allah and you knew that it only came by his command and it could be taken from you in any way that when you are tested, you are patient and you endure it with patience. Although it may be hard, you know the best of planners chose this for you. And that his choice and his decree is the best of decrees. And the third characteristic of achieving true happiness is And if he sins, again this is from the signs of one who is really content and happy. When he sins, he makes he repents and he asks Allah for forgiveness. So the one who commits sins and does not seek forgiveness, but he persists in that sinning, really this person is miserable. He may seem happy, but he's shielded from seeing his own sadness and his own miseries. And Allah's refuge is sought with that. Because the believer, when he sins, he rushes, his, he rushes to forgiveness. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلْمُوا أَنفُسُهُمْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذَنُوبِهِمْ وَمَا يَغْفِرَ الذَّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says in Surah Al-Imran what it means those who when they've committed a fahisha an illegal or an immoral act and they wrong themselves with evil, with sin they remember Allah and ask forgiveness for their sins and none can forgive the sins except for Allah, and they do not persist in what wrong they have done while they know. These ones, Allah will accept their istighfar, will accept their forgiveness, grant them forgiveness, and accept their tawbah. al Harith ibn Sulayn, he narrated, he said, that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, there were two hadiths, one from himself, and the same one from the Prophet sallallahu Abdullah said, إِنَّ المؤمن يرى ذنوبه كأنه في أصل في أصل جبل يخاف أن يقع عليه وإن الفاجر يرى ذنوبه كذباب وقع على أنفه فقال به هكذا فطار. This hadith that we have in Sahih al-Tirmidhi is one that we mention many times again and it shows us the state of the companions. Many of them who were promised Jannah or who were supportive of the Prophet and they believed. And they did righteous deeds. Yet this was their view. The Prophet ﷺ and Abdullah bin Mas'ud, they narrate this narration that the believer, he sees his sins, his sins or her sins, as if those sins are a mountain. And they're standing at the base of that mountain, waiting for that mountain to crush them. Waiting for all the sins they've done to destroy them. But the fajr, the corrupt one, 
looks at his sins like an annoyance. I don't want to think about what I do. I don't want to reflect on the sins I'm choosing to do, the bad that I'm doing, the evil that I'm doing. They treat it like a fly that comes across your nose. You're annoyed by it, so you swat at it this way and that way so that it flies away and you don't have to think about it anymore. The believer's always looking at his sins and reflecting upon what he's done to transgress Allah's limits, but he should never despair for Allah's mercy. Allah, he says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَنُونَ السُّوءُ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Allah says what means Allah accepts only the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and foolishness and they repent soon afterwards. Meaning, when they fall into sin, they catch themselves and they make tawbah right away. It is they whom Allah will forgive and Allah is ever the all-knower, the all-wise. Ibn Ma'qil, he narrated, he said, I entered upon my father, Abdullah, and I heard him say that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, regret, when you regret something, you're saddened that you did this sin, this action, this transgression, this is tawbah. So my father said, did you hear the Prophet actually say this, that regret is tawbah? He said, naam, yes. And this narration is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah as well. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he's reported, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, The one who makes at-tawbat al-nasuha, the sincere repentance, where they have regret and remorse, and they vow not to do it again, and they ask Allah for forgiveness, and for Allah to accept their tawbah and repentance. The one who does this, it is as if he did not sin. It is as if he or she did not sin. And Shaykh al-Bani Hassan, he uh, graded this as fair, as an acceptable hadith. None of us are free from sins. And Allah, by His Rahmah, He has kept open the doors of Tawbah. The doors of Tawbah are open, always open, not only in Ramadan, but throughout every night, every day, every morning, every evening, the doors of Tawbah are open. Every second, you can go repent to Allah unless that sun rises in the west or our soul is in our throat ready to be extracted. Make tawbah to Allah. But it's required that we turn to Allah and hasten to repentance and not delay it. But seek forgiveness right away. And this is a sign of Allah's rahmah, a sign of Allah's mercy. Allah says, and march forth in a way which leads to forgiveness from your Lord and for paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. Prepare for the righteous ones. Prepare for the pious. Prepare for those who keep their duty to Allah. Prepare for those who try their best to obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم, to put a barrier between themselves and Allah's punishment. So Allah, He began by saying, Sari'u in a Race to forgiveness. To get to Jannah, that's prepared for the righteous believers. Sinners going to Jannah, this is Allah's rahmah. This is Allah's mercy that He asks, He encourages, commands us to seek forgiveness and repent to Him sincerely and He will accept it. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْفِرُ الذُّنُوبِ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, what means, say, O my servants, who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair for the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. There's nothing He can't forgive. You don't got to go to a priest. You don't got to go to a grave. billah. We seek ref- Allah's refuge with that. You don't got to go nowhere but you. Your lips. Sincerely repenting to Allah. In your sajda, before taslim, in the hours of response, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Do not despair for the mercy of Allah. Allah indeed forgives all sins. Indeed, He is the one who is forgiving the most merciful. In Allah la yaghfiru wa yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Indeed, Allah does not forgive the sin of shirk unless you truly repent for it. But any other sin, He forgives whom He wills and what He pleases. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is clear that the Adam, the children of Adam, they're always in pursuit of this sin. Even America, why are we going there? Pursuit of happiness. England, why are we going there? Pursuit of happiness. Everyone, their pursuit is happiness. But what happiness are you seeking? 
A temporary one or a permanent one? What happiness are you seeking? A true one or a fake one? Because without a doubt, we have become accustomed to searching for happiness in the haram, in the things Allah forbade, in the things that Allah said, it's an illusion. It's think, making you think it's making you better, making you feel better, but it's really, it really isn't. In khamar, in drugs and intoxicants. The Muslims should know to stay away from these things. Ummul khabaif, the mother of all evils. Not just alcohol, any drug falls under this category of khamar. Is it real happiness when someone's not? No. They're controlled by something else and someone else. Is it real happiness? No. For maybe some seconds things go away and then it comes back with a vengeance. In gambling, people thinking that they can gamble and go, even though Allah, He mentions gambling with khamar. You have some people, no, I'm going to touch khamar. That's not, but I'll, I'll, I, I gamble. Allah mentions them in the same ayat to show their evil. Yeah, people will belittle it. I'm just doing it for fun. I'm not really caring. No, man. You get a penny from that, do not put it in your mouth or your children's mouth. That money is as dirty as the dirtiest thing alive. But people will go and they'll gamble, even though Allah has warned us against it. In zina, searching for happiness, yet that it only leads them to problems. In riba, in interest, in selling and buying the haram, People searching for happiness, for wealth, for money, to make their life easier. Yet it only drowns them further and further in doubt, in anxiety, in being busy, taking them away from the remembrance of Allah. You will not find happiness in the things Allah made forbidden. Even if at the touch of them they may seem like they have some benefit as Allah said. But sadly we become blind. And we fail to see what is right in front of us. The true happiness. It is Tawheed. Worshipping Allah alone without partners. Trusting in Him completely. Relying upon Him completely. Leaving, uh, loving Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anyone and anything else. Being content with what Allah decrees for you. In the Quran and the Sunnah as your two guides. In Islam. If you have these three characteristics. Backed by this Tawheed. The Tawheed, the Qur'an, the Sunnah are your foundation. If you have these characteristics, you will have true happiness in this life and the next. In the Ra'atiya Shatr, that when you're given, you praise and you thank Allah. Or the Tuliya Sabr, and if he's tested, when you're tested, you are patient and you accept what Allah decreed. Or the Adna Bastaghfar, and when you sin, you race to forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those who, when we're given, we are grateful. When we're tested, we are patient. And when we fall into sin, we race to forgiveness. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat Ya Allahumma na'amuat Innaka antasmi'an qareeban mujidu al-da'awad Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik Ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عادائك وعداء الدين يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين